Specialized has just launched the latest generation of its highly regarded Alley model. The Alley name means quite a lot to the American brand and has a fair bit of history attached to it. But this new model contains some updates that certainly reflect the changing of the times. For those unaware, the Alley is Specialized entry-level road bike. It now comes in two models, a Shimano 8-speed Claris build with Tetro mechanical disc brakes and a Shimano 10-speed Tiagra build with hydraulic disc brakes. That's right, you heard me correctly. The Alley is now a disc brake only bike. There will no longer be an Alley available with rim brakes. If there was ever a more obvious sign that rim brakes are fading away, then this is definitely it. The Tetro calipers found on the base level alley will likely leave a lot to be desired. It's not to say that the performance will be bad, but it's no secret that to get the best out of cable actuated brakes, you need to stay on top of the maintenance to ensure the setup is always at its best. The step up to hydraulics on the alley Sport is a welcome upgrade and will tick the boxes of the riders who do want the feature on an entry level road bike. One byproduct of ditching rim brakes is that it's opened up the opportunity to expand the amount of tire clearance on offer. So from the previous 28 millimeters, the new Alley can accommodate tires of up to 35 millimeters in size or 32 millimeters when using mug guards. Specialized own road sport tires are fitted from stock and it's made use of the new space on offer by opting for the 30C tire size. When I tested these tyres as part of a wider budget tyre group test, I did find them to be a little harsh, thanks to a slightly harder casing, but they didn't lack any grip. For purchases of this bike, I would suggest that when the time does come to replacing the tyres, you should remember that there are better options available and ones which will definitely improve the ride feel. Other changes include a complete overhaul of the bike's geometry. For a long time, the Alley was always a slightly softer version of the Tarmac, which is the brand's racy road bike. But with the introduction of the Alley Sprint, which currently has a carbon copy of the Tarmac's geometry, the new Alley has now opted to mimic the geometry of the Roubaix, the brand's ever popular endurance bike. I bet I can guess what you're thinking. Disc brake only, big tire clearance, and now a more relaxed controlling geometry. Is the Alley now just a gravel bike? Well, no. After having ridden the bike, it does feel like a purposeful road bike. The lack of a future shock means it's not as forgiving as the Roubaix, but it still feels keen in its handling. It feels predictable and responsive. The bike still captures some of that Alley magic, which I can only really describe as a bike that just wants to be ridden, except with this generation, that ride is a more relaxed one. As I mentioned earlier, I think that a change of tyres would make a huge benefit to how this bike feels, and happily, that's a pretty easy thing to do. I would expect a change of rubber to make the bike feel a little more sprightly, especially when putting the power down. The extra tyre capacity is nice to have, especially with the seemingly constant degradation in road quality. Ironing out the lumps and bumps means that you really don't have to worry about which roads you do and don't ride down. And if you need to make a dash across some light gravel or hard pack, then you can. But this still isn't a gravel bike. It's just a versatile road bike that seems to cater for an incredibly wide audience, which is hardly surprising when you consider the role that this bike plays in specialized road bike lineup. The versatility doesn't even stop with the big tire clearance, but as mentioned, Specialized says that you can use full wraparound mudguards and racks. So this keeps the door open for commuters and adventure riders. Other small changes include through axles, again thanks to those disc brakes, and a funky looking bridge between the seat stays. Specialized claim this is purely for aesthetics. I see it as being slightly pointless, and even though they say it doesn't interfere with the ability to mount mudguards, I'm not too sure why they had to add in the possibility of doubt. The new models also come with a couple of brand new price points to match. The base alley will come in at £1,100 or $1,200, while the Tiagra equipped alley sport will land at £1,600 or $1,800. 
For context, the previous base alley was just shy of £1,000, and the old sport, which had Sora, was £1,250. So in the first instance, the extra £100 gets you those Tetro mechanical disc brakes, but for the sport, the extra £350 gets you hydraulic disc brakes and a step up in group set. The claim weights are kind of where you'd expect them to be. A 56 cm Alley Sport is listed around 9.5 kilos or 21 pounds, while the base Alley is listed at circa 10 kilos or 22.2 pounds. Fairly respectable weights and easily reduced with a new set of wheels and tyres. The question this new Alley has left me with is, is the new Alley good value? Logic, to some extent, would dictate that the entry-level road bike offering from a brand the size of Specialized should be good value, but is it? Are they pricing themselves out of a hotly contested market by leaving the £1,000 price bracket behind? Has Specialized become arrogant in its branding of the Alley and believes that the name alone will be enough to shift bikes? When looking at the competition, one thing becomes very clear. There are better value options available from the other big brands. Cannondale has its CAD Optimo range, which we are big fans of. Yes, it doesn't come with disc brakes. However, the rim brakes are still perfectly functional for the purpose. The same goes for Giant. It has its Contend model, which is available with disc brakes for less money with more group set options. There's a similar story over at Trek 2 with the aluminium version of the Demane. I think it's hard to say that the new Alley is good value when you're looking at the competitors. And of course here, I've only mentioned a few bikes from a few of the big brands. If you're after an entry-level road bike, even larger savings can be found from smaller brands or ones with the sole purpose of delivering good value. Perhaps Specialized is okay with losing market share to its competitors and is just hoping that customers will still buy into the Alley name and what it represents to so many people. It's a reputation that the new bike still embodies, that being a well thought out geometry despite its more relaxed change in nature. And the frame is lighter than a lot of the cheaper options out on the market. It may not be the best value entry level road bike, but it is a good quality road bike. Let me know your thoughts on this new Specialized Alley down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, then please do drop it a like, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I will see you again very soon.